Hi, and welcome to the Infected Tutorial Beginner's Guide. This is the first time I'm putting a guide together. I've done a couple of short tutorials, but this is going to be a little more in depth. We're going to go through the options, the settings, um, how to best start going to Vambi Towns, looking for technology so that you have an idea of what you're looking for and how best to get through the different seasons. So first things first, we are going to start with our options. So the options are where you have your audio, video, camera, and your keys. So audio, this is all very self-explanatory. It tells you what it is. Video, again, it's all there. Everything you need. You could change these, uh, increase them, decrease them. Camera, this is your mouse. So this is your mouse sensitivity. And then you have your key binds. So these are all the key binds. I have mine all set to default. The only one I've ever changed is this one here because for the inventory, it's under I. But if you don't want to change it, you just click on it. It's going to enter. So you enter bindings and you have to click it before this hits the end. I always put mine to tab. You could put yours to whatever you want. You can leave it at the eye. I just like when I'm playing, you would have to take your hand off the mouse, hit the eye, put your hand mouse back on the mouse. So it's up to you what you want to do. So it tells you all the different things here, how to jump space bar forward W. You got your WSAD. Then you have your run and crouch. So all your keys are here. They will help you. If you do accidentally hit something, you can hit this and it will put you back to the default binding. So we put that, it'll put it back, but we're going to fix that again. Everything here, fire, helmet, light, interact map. So as you keep on going, there is a pause, but I'm going to show you another way of pausing the game. And for the splitting items, I'm going to explain that to you more while we're playing. And then your weapon slots are your your numbers so one two three four you've only got four weapon slots okay so let's apply that we're gonna say okay we're gonna start a new game but first before i go into this we'll hit the back now these options are for the game itself so any different save files you have these are gonna save as the same options okay so new game Type game name. So you can name this whatever you would like to. So I'm going to name mine a uh, YouTube tutorial. Now you have your general options. So your game settings, you have enable auto save. Now you can enable it if you'd like, if uh, you don't want to have to remember to have to save it or if you just want it to save periodically. And then you can change your time. So you can do it every 5, 15, or 30 minutes. But just remember, let's say you do it every 15 minutes. 25 minutes into the game, you say, okay, well, you know what? I've had enough. Only the first 15 minutes will save. The next 10 minutes don't. So you always have to remember to save when you're leaving the game. But when you're leaving the game, it's going to give you the option. Well, it's going to tell you straight up. Are you sure you want to leave? Or have you saved? I can't remember what it says exactly. Yes or no. So it's going to tell you, and it's not like small little letters. It's, it's fairly big. I'll show you though. Um, temperature, Celsius, Fahrenheit, the month length. So this goes in real time minutes. So 60, 120, 180, 300, choose whatever you would like, but this is per month. So you got your 12 months per year to do a full 12 months at the 60 minutes. It's going to take you 12 hours. So that gives you a good idea. Seasons, you've got four seasons, only summer or only winter. Head bobble, I keep this disabled. By default, it is enabled, but I turn it off because what it does is when you're walking, your head goes left to right, left to right, and it can cause you to get a little motion sickness. So <laughs> I keep mine disabled. Stats depletion. Okay, so this is for your health, your thirst, and everything like that. 
you can either have it slow, normal, or fast. I always keep it on normal. Sun resistance. We're going to go a little more into this, but you can get sunburned. You want to try to stay in the shade when you notice your sun resistance dropping because as the temperature gets hotter, the stack goes down faster. The winter, your sun resistance does not play a factor at all. But if you don't want to play with sun resistance, you can just disable that. Then you have your free build. So this is any creative. You don't have to collect any resources. You don't have to go look for any technology and you could be invincible. So let's say you just want to play in creative. You would click enabled, disabled and enabled. So this will put you in no resources to collect, no technologies to find and invincible but we are not going to be playing with that so we are going to leave it like that okay so now for the fun part the swarm attack settings so you do get um vambi hordes that happen they're usually around midnight in game so midnight on day 10 is going to be your first horde event you will have three Bambi's attack and then it'll happen every three days after that. But if you don't want to play with a swarm, you can just completely disable it. Now, again, you can change when you want it to start. You can change how many Bambi's start on the first time. Now, remember, it goes up by one to a total of 15 Bambi's per horde. And you can also change how often the swarm frequency happens. But we are going to leave everything on default. Vambi setting. So starting on day five, you are going to start seeing Vambi's coming towards your house and in your area. And it's not fun. But you can totally turn them off if you don't want them. Just disable them. You can change the amount of health the Vambi has, and you can also change how much damage the Vambi has. Now, for the wildlife, you can enable or disable predators. Now, your predators are the scorpion, the wolf, the fox, and the bear. Now, you'll also notice that the boar does damage, but the boar is only a predator if you hit him first. Other than that, he'll just walk around. You can go walk beside him, talk to him if you'd like, and he won't do anything. The sheep, the deer, and the raccoon, on the other hand, if you try to get close to them, they will run away. Now, you can turn off any of the animals that you would like. Let's say you don't want to play with any bears or you don't want to play with any wolves. You could just turn those off. You could change the health that each animal has. And you can also change the damage that they do. In addition, you can also change how much meat you get after the kill. So you can decrease it or increase the amount of meat that you get. I'm leaving everything at default. Again, the only setting I have changed is the head bobble. Default is enabled. I put it disabled. So leave it at that. For me anyways, and <laughs> for any of you that have motion, motion sickness. But now we are going to start the game. This screen, you're going to notice there's hesitation. Nothing is moving. Just give it a little bit. It will start. It's just trying to load everything in. And as soon as we log in, I'm going to save immediately because what I'm going to do after I've explained everything is that I'm going to come back in and we're going to start fresh because you have a time and I want to be able to start at the beginning with you guys and help you guys through it. Okay. So I did show, tell you, I was going to show you how to pause the game. So when you get to the screen, if you hit escape, it's going to bring up this menu. And in this menu, the game is paused. You can't go any further. Also, let's say I want to quit. I click on quit. Are you sure you want uh, wish to quit? Have you saved? Yes. No. Quitting the game will not save your progress. So if you have not saved. No. Click on save. And it will save your game. Then you're free to quit. But again, when you click on quit, it's going to ask you, are you sure? 
If you're sure you have saved, say yes. Now, we are going to go through the different tabs that they have, and I'm going to explain all the different things. So let's start with, we are going to start with the backpack. So you'll see these different options at the top that you can click on. So the backpack, it stores everything except food and water. Then you have your food pack. So this is where your water, all your food goes. You do get five free beef stew to start. You will notice that they do not expire. And you also get a flask with some clean water to start. Once you drink the water, the flask is still there. You could just constantly refill it. Then you have your weapon backpack. So you have your four slots. One, two, three, four. A weapon will always go into the first available slot, but you can move them around if you'd like. So next to this, you have your weight. You are allowed to carry 50 pounds, 50 kilos. You're allowed to carry 50 because it doesn't state what it is. So, <laughs> But we are sitting at 8.1 out of 50. Anything over the 50, it will be encumbered and you will not be able to run. Then we've got our building tab. So our building tab, we've got construction, placeables, itempedia. So for the construction, anything from foundations down to railings, are non-movable. So once you've placed them down, you've built them, you can't move them anymore. So the only thing you can do is delete them and you'll get back half your resources. Now, if you've put the ghost impression down and you started filling it up, but haven't completed it and decided, oh no, I don't want it there, and you delete it, you'll get all the resources you've put into it. Now for the others, the window and the wooden pillar are the same. They are not movable, but from the wooden fence down to the metal gate. So all these, they are movable items. So as soon as you build them, you can move them around as much as you want. You can move them to the other side of the map if you wish. That is all up to you. Our placeables. Now you've got workbenches, storage, power, food, furniture, and others. So for the workbenches, you're going to notice some of them say tech not obtained. That is the, the technology we were talking about. You have to go to the towns. You have to find your technology and then it will open up whatever you received. Storage. It's all the different kind of storage. You got your ingot shelves. You've got your chest rack storage box. Everything is pretty explanatory. We are going to build this stuff during the game. We'll, we'll explain it a lot more. Power. Now, the first three items you're going to notice again, tech not obtained. So you need your technology for that. We are going to be building these as well, and we will explain it. It does state that solar panel does generate 40 peak and uh, 40 power at its peak output. But we're going to explain more of this. Food. So this is anything that has to do with food to prepare food. So you've got your campfire, which you can cook on your plant bed to grow your fridge. Again, tech not obtained, but it also requires power as you can see. So you can put food in it. You got your water basin, drying rack. We're going to go through all this stuff. Now for the furniture, the only item in here that is necessary is the bed. Everything else is cosmetic. So it's up to you if you want to build any of this. I may put a, lant a lantern in at some point, but I'm not going to go that far into it. So this really is up to you guys. Others. Okay, so this is going to give you most of the stuff that you're going to need. So you've got your forges. You've got a small forge. You've got a big one. You've got your oil extractors. It tells you all the information. You'll notice the oil extractor requires 100 power and tap. You need technology for that as well. You have an oil pump. Now the oil pump will explain into greater details later. But if you read all the information in the description, it tells you really everything that you need to know. And then itempedia. Okay, so this is where you're going to learn how to you make your weapons. It tells you everything. Okay, so 
we're going to start with the stone axe. So it can be crafted by the player or on the workbench. And it tells you you need one stick and one small stone. The same with a stone pickaxe. You need a stick, a stone blade, and two plant fiber. We will get more into this. Resources. So this just gives a list of the different resources, how you can acquire them, and how to make them if it's not an item that's acquirable. So for the steel alloy, you have to make this on the anvil. You need one lead ore and one iron ore put together on the anvil. You'll get that. Everything, yeah. This you can get by killing animals. This you make it at the chemistry table with uh, three oil cans and five bark chips. Okay, food and drinks. If you go over them, all the fruits and vegetables are able to be found in the wild, except in the winter. In the winter, you can't find any of them out in the wild anymore. But you will get seeds when you harvest them. And okay, so raw fish you get from catching fish, obviously. We're going to go through that. This gives you all your general stats. So your health, your stamina, what it does to your thirst, everything like that. It gives you all the information. Now, if you could see for the meat stew at the very bottom in the orange those max health and max stamina. I'm going to go over that after, but this increases it. So you can increase your stats. You can also make a large flask. So to make that, you need three aluminum ingots. We're going to get to that as well. So that's just basically your breakdown. Then you have your seeds, armor and clothes. So for your armor and clothes, it's going to give you all your information, tells you how to make it, where to make it, but it also tells you how much armor it gives you and what it does to the heat. Does it give it a minus effect on the heat or does it give it a plus effect on the heat? Others. So this is basically anything that doesn't fit anywhere else in here. You got your first aid, you got your mechanical, electrical parts. All these things are going to come in handy. You got potato paste. This, again, is good for the sun resistance. All the different technology blueprints, bandages. So you could just look over them. The pots and pans for the stove. You need a clay bowl, and that is for your onion soup. You got your cans. The empty cans are going to come in handy, and we're going to explain that after, too. Bulk items. So this is what people make a lot of in bulk. So basically your bolt, your bone shards, your plastic. Like before I told you, I was going to take three oil cans and five bark chips to make a plastic. But if you put 15 oil cans and 25 bark chips, you can make five plastic. So that about sums up all these. So this is your personal crafting table. And... Personal crafting table can be used on items that says can be crafted by the player. So the stone axe can be crafted by the player. A, a stone pickaxe, a stone spear. There's a few items that can be crafted by the player. The archer bow, but uh, we'll worry about those later. So yeah, that's your personal crafting table. Then you have your technology blueprint list. So as you collect technology through the town, it's going to put a check mark and it will check off every technology you have found. The last tab you have is your body temperature and all the clothing armor that you're wearing. We will show you a little more of this later. This is also where you're going to apply your bandages. So if you get hurt by something and you notice that you need to be bandaged, these are your bandages. There's two different kinds, regular bandage, medicated bandage. So the regular bandage, it goes on a wound that is a red cross. So you just drag it from here and you apply it to wherever the wound is. Now, if it is like a red circle with 
looks like infected, I guess. You would use a medicated bandage on that. So you will take the medicated bandage and stick it on the wound and it'll heal it as well. Now, don't let those wounds go too long because each wound takes more and more health away from you. So the faster you can bandage, the better it is for your long run. Okay, so that about covers all of this. But yeah, body temperature does play a factor in this game. I think anything over 40... Yeah, I think any body temperature over 40, you start overheating. And any temperature under... It gets under zero, you start freezing. Okay, so now that that's all explained, let's get into this bar over here. So again, this shows you your weight. So we're sitting at 8.1 out of 50. Our health is 100. Our stamina is 100. Our thirst level is 62 out of 100. These four bars beneath play a factor in our hunger. So if our hunger starts lowering and once it gets to 50%, it drops our stamina by half. So we will lose and only have 50 stamina. The only way to bring it back to the 100 is bring your health bar or your hunger bar up above the 50%. You have your energy level. This can be increased while you're sleeping, as can your health. Your health does increase while you're sleeping. Energy increases while you're sleeping, but the rest of your stats decrease while you're sleeping. But we'll go over that later. And then you have your sun resistance. As you notice, it will go down. I have dropped. It must be getting cloudy. Oh, no, I'm standing in a tree here. The sun has moved. So if I stand here, you're going to notice that the sun resistance will start going down. And that the only way to increase it is to get back into shade. So if you notice, it went from 72 to 71. So if I go over here, stand in the shade, it should go back up. Now, just standing in the shade will increase your sun resistance all the way back up to the 100. At the beginning, it said press F for tutorial. So when you press the F, this comes up, your tutorial tasks. So this is just a helpful guide to get you through making the first little bit in the game. You will also find your compass. These stats stay here, but you'll also see what uh, month and what season you're in and uh, the day and time. Now, our little box on the side there for our health and all that, let's say that disappears. If we hold, uh, if we press G, we can take it away or we can bring it back. So G, I'm going to put a list of all the descript, um, a list of all the shortcuts in the description, but I'm also going to put them on screen as we're going along. So G to bring that back. Okay, so the last thing we're going to go through is the map. Now, if you press M, you'll bring up your map. And if you notice, we're here. So this is our spawn location. There are three different spawn locations on this map. So this is one, one over here, and this one over here. Those three are all copper sites. Then you have your other ones that are outside. Those are aluminum or cobalt. We're not going to go into which one is what, but I will give you an, a link to find out because uh, there is a good website with all this information. These are your caves. Now this cave over here, this is a, this is one big one. So you've got two entrances into this cave. This is a good cave to get lost in, so please be careful. If you do go wandering into this cave, bring yourself a lot of bandages and a lot of food. This is a very small cave. Doesn't give you very much in there. This cave and that cave, those I find are the best caves. There's only one entrance in. It's not too complicated to navigate, and you can get everything that you need in there. Uh, Vambi Towns. Okay, so like I said, there are six Vambi Towns. So we'll start over here. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Yeah, so that pretty well sums up all the explaining on that. I hope this was helpful for you guys. At any time, if you guys want, you can ask me any questions. You can leave them in any of my comments on 
the infected series doesn't have to be this one it could be any of them or you can jump into my dis uh, my discord you can hit me up there there is also a wiki that you can also go and check i will put the link for that in the description below but i think i'm going to end it there and on that note i wish you guys a good afternoon good evening wherever you are and i'll see you in the next episode take care